afternoon viewers so today we are going to see the next uh, playing code topic under this topic we have today we are going to see about the epicycloid okay so there are two types of curves uh, it will be coming under cycloid curve so last uh, video you have seen about the cycloid today in this video we are going to learn about the epicycloid curve the main thing difference i want to tell you is uh, in case of a uh, cycloidal curve what you feel is a uh, yeah, circle which rolls on a horizontal table right which rolls on a horizontal table it tends to rotate okay so when it reaches without slipping what does it happen what is the shape of the curve this is what we have done in case of cycloid right so here it's a flat surface this is what the concept this is what the assumption we have taken so you have the flat surface a yeah, circle which rolls on the flat surface now in case of epicycloid there will be small modification small little bit alteration the same circle which is going to roll a same circle which is going to roll on another circle so this is the main logic here so a same circle which is going to roll on another circle which is going to call it as a epicycloid so what the curve we are going to trace that is what we are going to call it as a epicycloid it is a curve traced by the point on the circumference of a circle which rolls without slipping on the outside of another circle so outside of another circle means this is a circle okay so here i want to tell you is this particular parameter we are going to call it as a rolling circle a circle which rolls we are going to call it as a rolling circle okay the circle on which it rolls on the outside of another circle this circle we are going to call it as a base circle or in other words we are going to call this as a directing circle and here base circle also we have another name it is called as a generating circle so just keep in your mind the other terminologies generating circle okay so if this is the case it is tends to roll okay at the time we need to find out the for the full complete revolution what is the angle which has been subtracted for example in this particular portion the angle which has been subtracted here at an angle of theta okay for finding out the theta we will have the formula theta equal to small r by capital r into 360 degree so we need to find out this angle to find out the at what angle it has been subtracted okay so this is and small r is called as the radius of rolling circle and capital r is the radius of base circle so with this basic formula i am going to solve one problem related to epicycloid curve okay now i will go for the problem So this is a problem data we are going to have. Draw an epicycloid of rolling circle, 40 mm, which rolls outside of another circle 150 mm diameter. So this is 40 mm. Okay, this is small diameter. It's a diameter of a rolling circle, which rolls outside of another circle. What is the diameter they are given? Capital D is 150 mm. Okay, this is the given data. They are given the problem. So very interesting one we need to draw in case of epicycloid because we already practice cycloid right almost the same similar set of procedures which is going to follow in epicycloid also just have a look on to it so the first step what i am going to do is i need to find out the angle value that is very important so i already told you the angle value how to find it out theta equal to r by r into 360 so small r value is 20 mm and capital r is 75 it's a radius so if i am going to put this value the value of theta we are going to get it will be is equal to 96 degree the theta value will be 96 okay so this is the value with this data only i am going to solve this problem here so now place the lower most area here place on simple point this is origin point with this origin point you just draw a horizontal line you have you are going to draw a reference line for this okay 
so this is the this point we are going to call it as a o point that is a center point now what i am going to do is i am going to draw a base circle guys when we have placed a compass at the point o take an radius of 75 okay 75 this uh, capital d is 150 mm or the capital r is 75 right so place a compass at this point take 75 mm as radius or 7.5 cm okay just draw an arc we need to draw an arc in such a manner okay and you can able to draw it like a full circle also it may tends to go okay so anyhow here we used to draw in some terms of a a yes, small arc only okay next step what i am going to do is i am going to substitute this angle what is the angle i have given theta equal to 96 i already told you while taking this angle first initially you place your protector here in this off position so what i am going to do is i am going to draw draw a two lines okay it will be divided into two halves so 96 divided by 2 i am going to take it as a 40 degree here at the left side place your protector like in this manner mark this as a 48 at the right side reverse the protector like in this direction and mark 48 here also then you extend these lines and similarly you extend these lines okay so this is what the procedure so now the main thing is if i am going to draw as a horizontal vertical straight line it shows the total angle the total angle it will be is equal to 96 So if it is half of means how it will be? We will get it as a 48 and 48, right? So this is the logic I have done. And later, please kindly remove the unwanted lines. In order to avoid the confusion, you can able to remove the unwanted things. Okay. So now I have drawn the sector portion, the top of that bottommost sector portion here. Now above this, you I hope you know that epicycloid. I already told you a circle which rolls outside of the another circle. So this circle base circle. For an indication purpose, I will draw it in a little bit darker manner. So this is the base circle. So above this, we need to draw a rolling circle. So for that, what I am going to do is, so I will erase this particular region, and here I am going to have extend this line in such a manner. Okay, extend this line in such a manner, and from this point, I am going to give that this point as let it be P point. and let me take this point as a q okay then i am going to draw a rolling circle here so for capturing the rolling circle what i need to do is we need to capture the center point that is very important whenever we are going to draw a circle first to capture the center point of the circle then you start to draw it so similarly here i know that the circle is going to come but where the center point we have the radius as diameter is 40 mm radius means it's 20 mm so what i am going to do from this p point capture a distance of 20 mm in such a manner you may get the center point here now with this cp distance value will be equal to 2, 20 mm and place your compass at the point c with cp as radius you just draw a circle so that you will get a as per our requirement okay so that is what i am going to do it here so first thing you keep it here like in this manner then i am going to draw a circle here so something like this okay okay and this p point it is here can you mark it little bit downwards yeah this is p point okay so now i have drawn the circle like in this manner next part what i need to do is i need to divide this rolling circle into two divisions the same thing cycloid what you done so here for dividing any circle into total divisions the total sum of the angle circular revolution or for a particular circular revolution the angle will be 360 degree so 360 divided by 12 since i am going to divide by total divisions here so the angle will be 30 degree so place your protector here and make this line as a reference line and mark 30 degrees each and everything okay if you are going to divide the circle in a total divisions so you may get it all the divisions like in this manner anyhow and one more thing here i already told you the circle is rolling in 
like in this direction it's nothing but it's clockwise direction am i right the circle is rolling in a clockwise direction so automatically what about the numbering here the numbering it will be in anti clockwise direction there is no doubt about that so i have drawn the rolling circle here in such a manner we need to draw like in this the rolling circle which is outside of this base circle now next thing is i am going to divide this rolling circle into 12 divisions and as usual what i done in cycle the same thing i am going to do so the whole circle rotation it will be 360 degree so 360 degree divided by 12 it will gives 30 degree so each of the divisions i am plotting here it will be equal to 30 degree i am just marking the points 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and this 12th point and the p point both are same here okay so we are going to get the same point here just i am marking the divisions like in that manner in order to have a better understanding for you so these are all in 30 degrees that's what they have plotted okay just capture the points on the circumference of the circle it will be helpful for you to know mark these namings any anyway, i done it here so you have to do it very carefully here the marking of the divisions is very important okay so now uh, almost this is uh, center point as per logically you will get it like little bit here exactly okay okay that is the main thing here okay okay fine okay now next step what i am going to do is i am going to draw a concentric ox here i am going to draw a concentric ox from each and every point just see it here place your compass at this o point this tooth point it has been already drawn okay it has been already done now 11th and first point okay we need to draw it for that what i am going to do is place a compass at the o point with o11 as radius guys when you are drawing this o11 as radius placing your compass at the point one to take the radius and drawing it definitely this 11th point will coincide with this first point definitely as per the measurement if you do it correctly you will get it wonderfully and this while drawing this arc definitely to cut this particular point and it will goes away like in this manner I extend this line a little bit okay and I think we have a little bit space problem so I'm gonna put the title of this curve a little bit here so it will be okay now here the same similarly Place your compass at the here, the point 10, at the point O, take O10 as radius, okay? Just draw an arc in such a manner, it will cut at the second point and it will go like the concentric arc like in this manner. So, you will get a wonderful concentric arc here. And similarly, O9, this O9 will cut at the third point. Similarly, O8, it will intersect at the point 4. And similarly, O7, it will intersect at the point 5. And the last one, the sixth one, it's a separated point. So, with O6, we are going to draw a curve. Okay. You may get the curve like in this manner. So, finally, here is the unwanted lines what you have if you have any unwanted lines you just erase it so now we will get a drawn a concentric ox here okay so this is what we have done and the concentric ox it's very important so as per the measurement you draw it okay so this is the way now with this i have completed almost 50 percent of the problem here okay now next step what I am going to do is, I have got this sector right, I have divided uh, the rolling circle into 12 divisions and each and every point I have drawn a concentric ox here. My next step, I need to capture the center point. Before capturing the center point, I want to tell you one important thing. Here the center point is here, the rolling point center here. From this OCS center, place a compass at the point C, just draw an arc. Guys, this is very important viewers. So this this particular arc is plays a major role in drawing this problem. Okay, this particular arc we are going to call it as a 
locus of center in cycloid also we have seen so in here for your understanding purpose i am drawing a little bit darker here okay so here this particular one is called as a locus of center okay so this is the main part of the curve okay this locus of center is very important for uh, doing this problem okay okay next step i am going to divide this pq sector into two divisions you know that the pq is inclined at an angle of subtended angle angle of 96 degree so i am going to divide this 96 degree portion into two divisions so what does it get 96 divided by 12 if i am going to get 96 divided by 12 you will get the answer is 8 degree am i right it's 8 degree so place your protector in the similar pattern mark six divisions at this area and mark remaining six divisions at this area each of divisions it will be inclined at an angle of 8 degrees that's very important okay anyhow i will go like in this manner so 1 2 3 4 let me have like in this man we will have 1 2 3 4 five and sixth division is this one you may get it little bit bigger okay and 7 8 9 10 11 12 and the division is this one so i will divide the segments here like in this direction okay so now wherever i marked it here right you just extend the lines from each and every division for example this point i am going to give the name as 1 dash 2 dash so the naming for our understanding purpose we are giving here 7 dash 8 dash 9 dash 11 dash and 12 dash and next thing is i want to mark the center points c1 and c2 i want to find out the center points here for that main purpose only i am doing all these works so for that what i am going to do there are two ways we can able to do okay first what i will do is just join this one dash to this one point okay two dash three dash okay so like this you do it and remainderly seven dash all the points it has to be joined towards the point towards the point o and we should draw it very thin lines don't draw it darker that's very important then similarly keep your skull little bit backwards in such a way extend this point lines little bit upwards till it touches the locus of center locus of center means which one this is the line okay the c point line right the c point arc the corresponding arc that particular arc only we are going to call it as a locus of center so extend the 1 dash point towards till it touches the locus of center Similarly, do for two dash, three dash, four dash, everything, everything you do it, and do it very carefully, and place your scale properly and do it. Okay, so like this, I have plotted it here. Then I got the distance, like in this manner, where it touches this particular one, right? That point I will call it as C one, C two, C three, C four. C5, C6. I'm giving the names. So what you done in cycloid, the same thing only here also. The procedure remains same. So all the centers, the points which are marked on the locus of centers, I have given it as C1, C2, up to C12. Now my next step is place your compass at the point C1. Take the radius of this rolling circle. This radius of the rolling circle is nothing but it's nothing but small r equal to 20, right? capital r is 75 okay so take this as a 20 small uh, smaller value it is a rolling circle as 20 mm place your compass at the point c1 and cut an arc where we need to cut an arc that's very important and cut an arc at the corresponding first line see here this 11 and 1 yeah this arc that arc is very important so i will mark it here next place your compass at the point c2 Same similar radius of rolling circle, twenty mm only, no changes, and cut an arc at the corresponding line, the C two, and place your compass at the point C three, and cut an arc at the corresponding C three arc, C three arc. Though so this is the particular arc, so just cut it. And one more thing I want to tell you, see here, this three and line, this particular arc, it will be, and this locus of center will be, it lies below this 
particular of 3 and 9. Okay. You should have to analyze it very carefully. This locus of center definitely for epicycular problem. How it looks? It looks below this center line, this 3 9 arc only. So you guys also you get it like in that manner only. You cross check it. If you got it like in that manner, whatever the measurement you are doing is, is the correct manner. Okay. Or else some error in your diagram it will be there. And please you compass at the point C4 and cut an arc at the C4, the corresponding arc. C5, C6, yeah, at the topmost. And C6 definitely it will be topmost because what why I am saying is from here to here it will be 20 mm. The same distance C here, from here to here, C to 6, the distance will be 20 mm, 100 percent, no doubt. So C6 the point definitely it will be here only. If you mark somewhere else, definitely it's entirely wrong. And place your C7 point here and cut an arc here at this particular one. C8, C9, and C, yeah, C9, and C10. You may get it at C11, and last point C12, it will get like cut it like in that manner. Okay, so every point you will get it in a wonderful manner, and you can join it very easily. Okay, now with this, I am going to join this particular portion of this curve. Like by joining all these points, what I am going to do, I will draw it now. So I will join all these points. So from here to here. So definitely we will get a wonderful curve. So finally it will touch us like in this manner. And the arc it will touch us here. And it will reach us where it cuts the so draw in such a manner, it will cut it here, and it will join there and finally this curve has to touch with this 12th point. So extend this arc little bit downwards in such a manner it has to touch at the 12th point also or the point P. Okay. So that is the end of this uh, epicycloidal curve. So you will get a wonderful smooth curve and here in this problem what are the things we need to draw it darker that's very important this epicyclic curve we can draw it darker and next thing is we can draw this base circle yeah this region this region you can show it as a little bit darker one only these two things should be darker other things are not it should be very thin guys you have to use h or 2h pencils only okay then only you will get a wonderful perfect shape of epicycloid here okay so be clear on that. Uh, this is a final shape of epicycloid curve. And here tangent and normal. We need to draw a tangent and normal at any point on the curve. That's also they have given. So what I'm going to do is let me choose any point here. I'm let me choose here in this particular point. So let me take the point name as let it be M. Okay. Now take the radius of rolling circle. Place your point at the M and cut an arc. Where we need to cut an arc on the locus of center. See here, I cut an arc at the locus of center. You capture this point. From this point, just draw here. You just join this point towards this war point. Place your scale and join this point towards this war point. Reverse, while joining this point right, definitely it will intersect at the locus of uh, this base circle. It will intersect at the base circle. You capture this point. So from here to here, while drawing, see here, it will intersect at the base circle here and you capture this point now join this and this this point and this point and extend the line outwards okay so you may get it like in this manner okay now this point i'm going to call it as n and this point i'm going to call it as n dash this n and dash is nothing but the normal line okay what i done place your compass at the point one and cut an arc at the locus of center capture that particular point just join this point towards this whole point while joining definitely it will cut the base circle you capture that point and give the name as n now join n to towards the point m and extend this particular line so you will got n and dash for this n and dash just draw a tangential line which should be perpendicular to normal so you will get it as a use a protector and mark it as an 80 degree and tangential line it has to pass through the point m and it should be perpendicular to the normal line also so this is the tangent and normal for this particular problem 
once if you finish this problem so you guys have to mark the dimensions that's very important so what are you guys do you going to do so extend these lines okay extend these lines and draw a dimension line with arrow heads okay with arrow heads close the arrow heads and mark the dimension of the circle dia 40 it's a diameter of a rolling circle what the value they given it's 40 mm so i marked it here and similarly base circle i need to mark it here so for base circle i am just extending this line here and from this work point here this is the radius of this particular one right so that is what we used to have so from here to here just draw a dimension line and close the arrow heads and this is the radius of this particular base circle so i am marking it as radius 75 so this is the method of marking the dimension so we cannot able to mark the diameter for this so i am marking the radius value r75 we need to put it as a capital r 75 and dia 40 so these are the two important things very important we need to mark the dimension parameter that's the end of this epicycloidal curve okay so once after finishing it just make a note of it tt dash it's nothing but the tangential line or tangent line or let me take tangent and nn dash is a normal okay so all these things you mark it and just put it in a box so that it will be easy for us to earn good marks okay so that's the end of this problem thank you for watching